The burrito method is a little bit of sewing magic when it comes to sewing certain kinds of linings. But the magic trick happens so fast, it can be hard to see what's happening. So in this tutorial, we're gonna slow it down and break down the magic part so that it feels as easy as it actually is. Haley's gonna show you the best, easiest way to do the burrito method on a sleeveless garment. And by the way, if you wanna see the burrito method on a yoke, we have another video specifically for that, so check the link below. First, we'll talk about what the burrito method is and where you might use it. Then we'll walk you through all the steps paying extra attention at the magic tricky spot. We also have a very special tip to help you visualize if this is your first time doing the burrito method. Finally, we'll review the steps quickly so you can watch it all in action. All right, so Haley, tell us what is the burrito method? A burrito method is a technique that's used to get a clean finish on certain kinds of yolks and certain types of linings and facings. And it helps you to get a really clean enclosed look. All right, so where would you use it? So some of the places you might find it are places where you have a lining, um, sleeveless garments specifically with linings, sleeveless garments with all-in-one facings, that's a facing that um, finishes the neckline and the armholes mm -hmm. um, all in one piece. And then you'll also find it in yokes. So today we're going to look at how to use it on a sleeveless garment. Yes. So let's take a look at that. All right. So to start, we are going to sew the shoulder seams of our outer shell, and then we're going to do our inner shell as well. So I have my front bodice or front shirt and my back bodice, and I'm going to place those right sides together, so pretty sides kissing, and pin them together at the shoulder seam. Then we can take that over to our sewing machine and we can sew it at the correct seam allowance for whatever pattern that you're using. Um, I'm using five eighths, and sew each shoulder seam, and then press those open. No need to finish the seam allowance at this point because these are going to be totally encased and you do not need to finish them. Go ahead and also sew the shoulder seams of your facing or your lining. So again, right sides together, pin along that shoulder seam and then sew with a straight stitch. Once your shoulder seams are sewn, you can go ahead and press them open on both your outer shell and your lining or facing. If you are sewing an all-in-one facing like I am here, You'll also want to finish the bottom edge of the facing. That's this edge and then this edge here at this time. Now we're going to work on sewing this neckline. So you're going to place your outer shell with the right side facing up towards you on your work surface and then take your facing or your lining and lay it right sides together with that outer shell. So that's pretty sides kissing. So when you're looking at this neckline, you'll be looking at the wrong side of your facing fabric. Go ahead and pin all the way around that neckline, matching any notches and seams that you have, like the shoulder seam. Once everything is pinned into place, you can go ahead and take that to your sewing machine and sew all the way around the neckline. I usually start at the center back and sew all the way around and then finish with a back stitch right where I started. Okay, now that our neckline is all sewn, we're going to work on all of our grading and trimming and clipping that we need to do. So I'm going to always start by doing any grading or trimming. On this, I'm just gonna grade the seam allowance. Now that my seam allowance is graded, I'm gonna go ahead and clip anything that needs to be clipped. Once your neckline is all graded and notched and clipped, whatever you need to do to make that neckline lay flat, we're gonna work on understitching. So understitching is stitching the seam allowance of the garment to the lining or the facing. So you'll be sewing on the right side of your garment with the pretty side facing up towards you and that seam allowance, all of it facing towards your facing or your lining. And you're gonna be sewing really close to that seam line at about an eighth of an inch away. Mm -hmm. 
Once you have understitched your whole neckline, you'll want to give that a good press. Gorgeous. Then you'll have a neckline that looks something like this, but probably a little bit different because your project might look a little different. Isn't it so helpful to see the tricky steps like the burrito method? At Seamwork, we do a new sew along every single month where one of the Seamwork team members shows you how to sew every single step of a new pattern. It is so helpful to see these trickier things broken down into bite-sized pieces. So go over to Seamwork.com and check out our library of sew along classes. Now that our neckline is all sewn and you know all about sew alongs, we can go ahead and start burritoing. Okay, once your neckline is all sewn, we can work on sewing the armholes. And this is where the burrito method is going to come into play. We are going to start by having your garment laid out flat on your work surface. And then we are going to roll one side of our garment at that side seam and armhole in a nice, neat little bundle towards the other armhole. until your garment looks something like this. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lining or my facing and I am going to flip it so that it is right sides together with my outer shell. We've rolled up that entire side of our garment so that it fits nicely in this little channel and so that we can sew our armholes together. Once everything is aligned, you can go ahead and throw some pins in there, pinning at your shoulder seams, your notches, and then as much in between as your heart desires. Once you are pinned in place, you are going to sew that armhole. You'll start at one side seam and sew all the way around that armhole ending at the other side seam. Once that armhole is sewn, do a quick check to make sure you only caught two layers and then you can grade and clip that seam allowance. Now that our armhole is all graded and clipped, we can do a little bit of magic. We are going to turn everything right side out. So you are going to grasp between your lining or facing and the shell, and you'll feel that little rolled up bit from before. Just go ahead and pull that out. And you will reveal a totally clean finished armhole that you can now press to your liking. I gave this armhole a nice press and now that that is done and looking fabulous, we can work on repeating all of those steps on our second armhole. So this time I'm going to take our finished armhole side and I'm going to roll that towards our unfinished armhole in a nice tight little bundle. Once your garment looks like this, with one side rolled towards the other armhole, but you can still see a little bit of that armhole, you're going to take your facing or your lining, and it's gonna do a somersault, and flip underneath so that you can put the right sides together of your outer shell and your lining or facing. And so again, what we have done here is the rolled up part of our shirt is the filling of our burrito. And then this channel that we've created at the shoulder is our tortilla. We can go ahead and pin along that armhole at the seams, notches, pin to your heart's desire. And then we can go ahead and sew that with a straight stitch. 
just make sure that you are only pinning and sewing through two layers and you're not catching the filling of your burrito. Now that our second armhole is sewn, we can go ahead and grade, clip, turn everything right side out and give it a good press. Depending on the width of your shoulder seam, you might have a little bit harder time pulling everything right side out. And that's just because your channel that you're working with is a little bit narrower. That is one of the reasons that this technique just does not work with things with sleeves because it is too much to feed through this small channel. This technique is awesome and it is sewing magic, but you're going to want to reserve it for sleeveless garments only. Once you have turned out your second armhole and given everything a press, you should be left with something that looks somewhat like this. I have two clean finished armholes and a clean finished neckline. All that we have left to do is sew the side seams. To sew the side seams, we are going to place the outer shell of our garment right sides together. So right sides, pretty sides are touching and then flip your facing or your lining up so that the right sides of your facing or your lining are also touching. Then you can go ahead and pin along that seam, matching any notches and matching the seam line at the underarm. Once everything is pinned, you can take that to your sewing machine and sew the side seams starting at your facing or your lining and sewing all the way towards the hem. I went ahead and I sewed that side seam and I finished those seam allowances separately. Now I can press both side seams open and then flip everything right side out. Now we have our beautifully finished neckline and armhole that we accomplished with the burrito method. One final thing that I like to do to keep the lining or the facing nice and secure at the armhole is I go ahead and I stitch in the ditch at the side seam to secure that facing or that lining in place just at the top inch or so. And that keeps everything nice and secure when you're wearing it. Here's a tip. If you are still feeling a little bit unsure about the burrito method, go ahead and give it a try using a basting stitch. Then you can turn it all right side out and see if the magic worked. It is a lot easier to unpick basting stitches than it is regular stitches. And if the sewing magic worked, which I bet it did, you can go ahead and turn that wrong side out again and then sew it for real. All right, Haley, that was awesome. Thank you so much for showing that to us. Yeah. All right, we're gonna quickly recap. And if you wanna take a look at this recap in the future, you can always come back to this chapter in the video. How you do the burrito method and once again this tutorial made me really hungry so last time we asked you about your favorite hot sauce so today i want to know are you team burrito or team taco comment and let me know before you go there are two things we'd love for you to do first subscribe and second head over to seamwork.com where we have over 200 patterns that you can download this really helps us to continue to provide free weekly sewing content and more of the videos you love I want to do that again. <laughs> Go for it. It was like I had a, a different thought. You'll also want to repeat that same thing of again from the top. Sorry, I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. Are we rolling? Okay, great. We never stop. We got that. All of it. All right. One. Mm. <laughs> that looks 
good. <laughs> Isn't it so helpful to see the tricky steps like this one that we're covering in this video? I'm going to start over. <laughs> so. Wow. Okay. Of the sewing magic of the burrito. The magical burrito. I'm sorry. <laughs> It is a lot easier to unpick basting ste stitches. <laughs> Team Taco. <laughs>